Your home with Build Aid on Mix 93.8. Proudly brought to you by AfriSam. AfriSam, creating concrete possibilities. Build Aid on Mix 93.8 FM. Good evening. My name is Graham Alexander in the studio as usual. Kay and Simon looking after the desk. Kay, what are we up to? Well, we're talking about how architecture forms, informs and influences a city. So I'm looking for a building that's been in Josie since 1913, but changed to its present form in 1976. So it's a slightly complicated clue here. It used to be filled with fresh produce and now it's filled with stories. It was renamed as well in 2014. So either name will will suffice. So, so that's the hard clue. So if you know what we're talking about, I'll be very impressed. But do send us an SMS on 41348. I'm going to be chatting to Kuba Krenitsky. Kuba is from the Architects of Justice. Kuba's been on the show before and I always enjoy chatting to him. And tonight we're simply going to talk about architecture. No stress. Nothing about you need an architect, none of that. We're just going to talk architecture. Architectural inspiration. Um, Now, we could spend a week probably talking about where this inspiration comes from. But if we look at the bigger picture, and tonight we're going to be focusing on our city of Johannesburg, um, its history, where we're going, and different nodes of development, etc. But that inspiration in a city, where does it, where's its root? Where's its root? Well, it, it, it definitely comes from need. And then how, how do we fulfill it? Um, in our case, we had a gold rush. And then we had lots of needs. And then we worked out how to fulfill them. And that's how you, you see the spread of Joburg and then eventually what forms into suburbs. But it's always what do we need and how can we fulfill it? And then what technology at that time brings to the construction process and you'll see that ever since the industrial revolution how 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 we can make things affects what we make looking at the history of a of of a, of a city any city for that matter and i know history forms a very important part of of architecture um i suppose every building almost or every street or every park has a reason for being there that links to that city's history uh, yeah, well, I mean, when it comes to parks, it's just, I mean, it was, it was smart city planning, but you'll see you'll see uh, sections of city that were made for commuter traffic that were designed with that intention, and places that were made to have housing had bigger green spaces to deal with, um, to deal with those populations. We've eaten up a lot of green space in Joburg. We, we, I don't think we, we respect the densities and the ratios as much as we used to. In fact, the whole of Joburg is under quite severe densification in order to meet the future needs and the the belief that by 2025, 75% of South Africa's populations will only live in the big cities. We were chatting to Stephen Nasu recently, and and I'll refer to him a couple of times during the show, um, about the densification of of Johannesburg and that another, another five people uh, five million people are going to are going to join us in Johannesburg over the next four to five years. Correct. That's Joburg's intention. Yeah. When it comes to um, people and cultures, South Africa obviously is unique because of apartheid. People were forced to stay in certain areas, and that's and that's still um, obvious in 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 some cities, particularly smaller smaller cities where we've almost got two towns every time you go through one. Absolutely, one on this side of the road and one on the other side of the road. The one down the road and that. Um, So a lot of of that was sort of forced on us, but but people also tend to congregate or live together in different religious groups and and so on. Is Johannesburg as diverse as any other city? I think Joburg is incredibly diverse, but I mean, (laughs) and it's funny you mention that, and yet even in Joburg there's an Ethiopian quarter you know, where the Ethiopians have taken, uh, or should I say, have created a community over four city blocks. And you can find Ethiopian clothing, coffee. So uh, I guess wherever we go, we, we long to, to bring a part of our culture or to keep the things that make us happy um, with us, you know, bring that with. So, no, Joburg is definitely quite a rainbow nation city. Stephen, Stephen alluded to allow it to happen. 
which which is quite, I thought was quite extreme. You know, just let the city do what it what it has to do. But if you think through it, it's, it's ultimately going to do that anyway. And he mentioned Little Somalia, which must be similar to Little Ethiopia, where where people from Somalia have gathered together, living together, built their own mosque, um, and so on. Um, and that densification and these different um, economies could drive a city ultimately economically. You can I just say no comment? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess, but I mean, I, most cities respond, most good cities respond to their uh, ha- ha- uh, inhabitants. Um, it, it, would be, it would be fantastic to have that sort of working system where actually it just could be what it needs to be, and then a city responds, sees if it's safe, feasible, and, uh, and then supports it, or says this is the wrong area. Um, I just don't think we have the feedback. Loop. I mean, it's nice. It's very utopian. I'm not saying it's not yeah. possible. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> you trumped me. Kuba, when we come back, I want to chat about that. You know, the influence of just the man in the street, the ordinary people. What influence do they have on a city? Do they have a voice? Is there anybody listening? I'm chatting to <coughs> Kuba Kronetsky. We're chatting um, architecture. Kuba, it's, it's so positive to hear that you've had first-hand experience of, of residential um, units being built in the city, being built properly, a lot of thought going into it, quality and, and, oh, and Don't so o- overhype what okay. I said. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's really positive because you hear so much negativity on like, we're we behind and we need to build another million of this, etc. Things are happening. And, and Stephen Nasu who was on the show a couple of weeks ago who, who wrote the document um, Johannesburg 2040, um, echoed. What Haven't read it yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> echoed exactly what you what you've just said, and obviously he, he has a real insight to what um, what's going on in Joburg. So something I want to chat to you about last, and it's, and it's not and it's not intended to to end the show on a negative note. But if we look at call it affordable ho- homes in South Africa, There's millions of people need homes, and and the government has managed to achieve to build a lot of these houses, um, and successfully but if you go into these areas and have a look at these rows and rows and rows of houses you can't help think that not much thought went into that could we have made better suburbs yeah. absolutely more than one design like maybe three or four designs <laughs> maybe um get okay. them all to face north okay, i'm going to stop you on there is a certain adaptability and an intention of placing an rdp home uh, at the center of its stand so that it can grow so it, so that you can have garages to one side and add additional bedrooms on the other side as the homeowner prospers. Um, the difficulty I have is that, yes, they don't create a sense of community. Sometimes there's a picturesque copy nearby and that is ignored. Um, they'll take the flattest land or we'll, we'll cleave land. And we'll, we'll make linear villages so that they meet the town a planning number um, or, or make the piping easier without thinking about where's the playground, where's the meeting space, where's the future uh, place of worship. If we bring the schools in, where do we want the schools? Can we leave the space out for the schools now and then place more housing around? And and, and even if we have a semi-successful um, uh, sort of city plan that works in some area, Often, as soon as it's replicated, it's not working in the next area because it's not specific. And and so, yes, even though I'm quite positive about some of the residential conversion and the resi- or, or the, the the building stock in in Joburg, I think we're doing some cool stuff. I think our, or, or maybe it's the fact that a lot of our housing approach has only been in that RDP typology. Then I think I'm I'm a bit disappointed. This is just me personally, but yeah. I I think variety, as you have alluded to throughout the show, um, it, is yep. necessary. I went for a drive through Bethel, not by choice. I, I took a wrong turn, and while I was there, I thought, let me have a look. And this was recently, and it's just rows and rows and rows, and there's thousands of houses. Very very uninteresting. But if you go to an area like Tembisa, that's been around for a long time. There's a lot more creativity going on there. There's a lot more happening. It's a better vibe. I'm not saying that great living conditions. There's still a lot of very poor people no, living but, in but, very but small there are, spaces. There are, nice, like there, are, there are better roads and there's better uh, re- uh, residential yeah. in Soweto, in Alex, in, in Timbisa. You're quite right. right? There's uh, a, Even a more affluent 
section of it, if, if you, 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 you'll say that. Even informal settlements like um, um, Dipsdurt, although part of it now is no longer informal, they're building fairly but decent houses. Graham, I think it's got to do with ownership. I've seen the smallest little piece of land with a little tin shack on it, but there's a lawn. And there's a little fence, and the person that's living there is proud, and they're doing their best. And I think when ownership, uh, tra- you know, uh, ownership creates that sense of pride because you're now doing it on your own. And that's where you're saying the older areas of like Tembisa, yes, where the guys put up his own boundary walls and added to his house, and it's been painted because he could, yeah. and time has allowed him to express himself. So moving into a city like Johannesburg, where we've already identified that planning and so on is taking place, and there's a lot of positive activity going on, um, then the, f- the future bodes well. It does, Graham. But you see, you asked this question, and I think it's 2016. Wouldn't it be cool if we could go into like a marble room in the center of Joburg, and there'd be a giant hologram, and real time you could zoom in and see what's going on and what's planned and what future buildings and where the infrastructure is and then actually like i said at the beginning of the show go hey we really need a pedestrian crossing here say citizen this id number this would like to you know apply for that there that sort of interaction would be great because i'm a professional you're in the building industry and nobody really knows what the big greater picture is and if we're gonna let it build around the people, then maybe it's time we build some sort of tool that lets the city interact with its people almost one-to-one in real time. And the technology is there. 100%. Let's check with Kay what that building was. Okay, we were talking about the Market Theatre, so well done to everyone who got it right. And our winner of some ice cream is Avril. And we can hold of you tomorrow, Avril, and see if we can get that ice cream to you. You'll be so chuffed about it. Okay, thanks for looking after us. Simon, thanks for looking after the desk. And Ian for videographing the show. Remember, go to our YouTube channel and you can check out all our videos of the shows that we've had. And a special thank you to Kuba Kronitsky. Thank you, Kuba, for coming to chat to us. Thanks for having me, guys. Up next is the greatest show on earth. We do this every Wednesday between 6 and 7. Chat to you next week. Ciao. With BuildAid on Mix brings you all sorts of interesting info about building. Graham Alexander chats to different guests every Wednesday evening between 6 and 7. Proudly brought to you by AfriSam. AfriSam, creating concrete possibilities.